the concept of God in Christianity. Before I discuss the concept of God in Christianity, I would like to make a few points clear. Islam is the only non-Christian faith which makes it an article of faith to believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. No Muslim is a Muslim if he does not believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. We believe that he was one of the mightiest messengers of God. We believe that he was the Messiah, translated Christ. We believe that he was born miraculously without any male intervention, which many modern day Christians today do not believe. We believe that he gave life to the dead with God's permission. We believe that he healed those born blind and lepers with God's permission. The Christians and the Muslims, we are going together. But one may ask, then where is the parting of ways? The parting of ways is that most of the Christians believe that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was Almighty God and he claimed divinity. In fact, if you read the Bible, there is not a single unequivocal statement in the complete Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God or where he says worship me. That if any Christian can point out a single unequivocal statement from any verse of the Bible, which is said by Jesus Christ, peace be upon himself, where he says that I am God, or where he says worship me, I, Zakir Naik, am ready to accept Christianity today. I am not speaking on behalf of my other Muslim brothers, because this is my field of comparative religion. I am ready to put my hand on the guillotine. If any Christian can point out from any version of the Bible, a single unequivocal verse in the Bible, a single unambiguous verse in the Bible, where Jesus Christ, peace be upon himself, says that I am God, or where he says, worship me, I am ready to accept Christianity. In fact, if you read the Bible, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, it's mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 28, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, my father is greater than I. Gospel of John, chapter number 10, verse number 29, my father is greater than all. Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 12, verse number 28. I cast out devils with the Spirit of God. Gospel of Luke, chapter number 11, verse number 20. I with the finger of God cast out devils. Gospel of John, chapter number 5, verse number 30. I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just. For I seek not my will, but the will of my Father. Anyone who says I seek not my will, but the will of Almighty God is a Muslim. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, according to the Bible, you are a Muslim. He submitted the will to God. He never claimed divinity. And he clearly mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 5, verse number 17 to 20, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, Think not that I have come to destroy the law of the prophets. I have come not to destroy, but to fulfill. And until the heaven and the earth pass away, not one jot or tittle will pass away from the law until all be fulfilled. And whosoever shall break one of the least commandments and teach men to do so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. And whosoever shall keep the commandments and teach the same will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, in no way shall you enter the kingdom of heaven. This is a verbatim quotation from the King James Version, Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 5, verse number 7 to 20. That means if you want to go to paradise, you have to be better than the Jews. And you have to follow all the commandments, what is mentioned in the Old Testament. So all what I said in the Old Testament, that God is one, you don't have to make images, have to be followed by the Christians if they want to go to heaven. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, never claimed divinity. In fact, he said, it's mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 24. He says, the words that you hear are not mine, but my fathers who have sent me. It's mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 17, verse number 3. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, This is life eternal, so that you may know one true God, and Jesus Christ, who thou hast sent. It's mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 19, verse 16 and 17. Once a man approaches Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, and tells him, Good master, what good things should I do so that I will enter eternal life, so that I'll go to paradise? So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, Why thou callest me good? There's only one good, that is, Almighty God. And if thou want to enter eternal life, you keep the commandments. He never said that you believe that I died on the cross for your sins. He never said that you believe I'm God and go to paradise. If you want to enter eternal life, if you want to go to paradise, you keep the commandments. Clearly mentioned in the book of Acts, chapter number 2, verse number 22. Ye men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God amongst you, 
by wonders and miracles and signs which God did by him and you are witness to it. A man approved of God amongst you by wonders and miracles and signs which God did by him and you are witness to it. When Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was asked, that which is the first of the commandment, he repeated verbatim what was said by Moses, peace be upon him. It's mentioned in the Gospel of Mark, chapter number 12, verse number 29, where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, Shama Israelo. It's the Hebrew quotation which means, Yoro Israel, the Lord, our God is one Lord. So if you read the Bible, you shall understand the concept of God in Christianity, which will help you increase the brotherhood between the Christians, the Muslims, the Hindus, and the Jews.